Hello everybody and welcome to the explanation video for the example that you were given. For those of you who are not currently in my class, I gave my students a practice problem at the end of our lesson for savings and investment and the first question given these data was to find the savings function and we know that savings equals y minus c minus g. So savings is going to equal to 2000 minus consumption. We plug in our consumption function of 400 plus 0.5 y minus t minus 600 r. That's where the real interest rate comes in with this savings function. And then minus g, which is 200. Uh, we can go ahead and actually erase this y minus t in here. What is y minus t? It's 1800. So we can add that in right away. So now we have savings as a function of r. So now let's just go ahead and clean this up a little bit. 2000 minus, we've got 400 minus 900 plus 600 R. I'm getting that by distributing this negative sign through everything and minus 200. Let's get all of our like terms together. Uh, we have 200, we have 200 or 2000 minus 400 minus 900 minus 200. So that's 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. So that's 2000 minus 1500 is going to be 500 plus 600 R. And what we've done is we have gone ahead and found our savings function. So that was part one of this question, finding that desired savings function, what people want to save. Uh, the next thing that was asked to do was to solve for the goods market clearing interest rate. So that's when savings equals investment. So we take this 500 plus 600 R and we make that equal to our interest uh, or sorry, our investment function, which is 600 minus 400 R. Add both, add 400 to both sides. I'm going to get 1000 R equals 100. Uh, R is going to equal to, I divide this by 1000, right? What do I get? I get rid of these zeros, get rid of these zeros, one over 10, right? So R, let me erase that so that way we can just make it a little cleaner for everybody. R is going to be equal to 10%, right? Or 0.1. So that was the first two parts of this uh, of this question. Uh, the next is to solve for the level of savings and investment. So three, what is the level of savings and investment? Well, we know it's at equilibrium, so we just plug it into this function. We plug that 0 0.01, right? So this is also 0 0.01. We plug that into savings and or uh, investment. So uh, if we plug it into savings, right, it's 500 plus 600 times 0 0.1, uh, which is just going to be, uh, 500 plus 60, uh, which is going to equal the 560. Let's go ahead and uh, double check our work. This is just going to be 600 minus 400 times 10% or 0 0.1, which is 600 minus uh, 40, which is equal to 560. So boom, we have that. Now we know that both our interest rate and our amount of savings and investment is at that equilibrium point. We've double checked our work. So we kind of have a good idea that we're getting this question right right now. The last part is drawing this savings investment diagram and locating this initial equilibrium and then labeling it as point A. So I'm gonna do is gonna make this a little smaller, throw this up in the corner for everyone. And so how do we uh, do this diagram? Well, we have savings and investment on the horizontal axis and we have the interest rate on the uh, vertical axis. Uh, no worries of making this uh, drawn to scale or anything. I just want you to know that this is savings, this is investment, and then we know this and it tells us to label it as point A, so make sure you're labeling it. We wanna make sure we're following directions. The amount of savings and investment we solved was 560, and the interest rate here was 0 0.10 or 10%. So we just wanna make sure we're labeling everything. So this was 0.4. This is how you do a question like this. Of course, other things that I could ask, right? Uh, we know we have investment, so that right here, that's this equation right here, 600 minus 400 R. We have savings right here, so we know savings is 500 plus 600 R. So what we could we could put you know 0.2 up here and see uh, what the surplus of funds is. We could put 0.05 down here and see what the shortage of funds is. There's a ton of things we can ask, but if you can get through a basic problem with uh, a few things, making sure that you can solve for the savings function and then solving for the equilibrium point, that's gonna lead you uh, into a really good spot. And you're gonna be really prepared for the quiz uh, that you'll be uh, asked to do on this material. 